Now you may be asking yourself, why didn't he just finish up that example? Why did he stop the video there and why is he starting a new one? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one is I'm someone who can appreciate a good cliffhanger. You know, in a TV show when they just leave you with one of those cliffhangers, you're like, oh, I gotta watch the next one. That's a lot of fun. Uh, Lost, the show Lost, was just great for this, you know, cliffhanger, cliffhanger, cliffhanger. And back in those days, there was no such thing as binge watching. You had to wait for the next week. And so, anyway, uh, then the, the the real reason is that I, I went to a conference a few years back and they'd done a study where they took essentially the same content, but they were delivering it in different lengths. So some videos were only this long, broken up over many pieces and, and then they did different durations and then they had the full content all in one big long video and then they had different I think students watch them and um, what they found was that students are significantly more likely to watch a video if it's less than 10 minutes and so since then I have always tried to make my videos less than 10 minutes so that more people will watch them right um, and so anyway, that's, I'll do my best all, all uh, through the course to try to keep my videos under 10 minutes in length, um, which also I found provides some consistency. If we're always about 10 minutes, you know what's coming. It's not like the next video is now 45 minutes. And so people tend to like that. Anyway, let's, let's finish up our little example here. So I said you can pass in multiple things, but if I try doing this, I'm going to get an error Actually, I didn't even get an error. It just says, hello world. There wasn't an error. It's just going into the string array. But if I were to try to, um, how do I get the information out of that array? And so if I wanted to instead, um, you know, say, hello, Spencer, then I can do that by, by uh, finishing this string literal, we call it and then concatenating to that, meaning we're gonna add something onto that. We use the plus sign in C sharp. Uh, whatever is coming in from that args. And so um, I say args, and then I'm gonna go look and see what's in apartment zero. And then I can add on to the end of that. I can concatenate again um, that, that exclamation point onto the end. All right, so, um, now when I run this, if I run this program, well, sorry, I did it at the, it's not gonna work because there's no opportunity, and I'm glad I did this actually, that was an accident, but sometimes accidents work out well. I ran it up here, and so it's going to give me an error because there was no opportunity to enter in those arguments that are coming in, or parameters. It, we call them different things, arguments, parameters. Um, there's something else I can't think of right off the top of my head, but it's the information that's being passed to help what the method do whatever it needs to do. Um, so let's stop that, the little stop button there, the red one I clicked on, and we'll come back to the console, which is what I meant to do. So at the console, we will uh, run our command to compile this program again, and um, I'm not sure actually if I saved it, so this might be good, although I did run it, and I think it auto-saves when you run it up here. Let's see what happens when I try running this. So I'm gonna say program.exe Spencer. And sure enough, it goes into that args apartment building we built, and what's in the apartment zero now is Spencer. You can read that, right? And so that's what the is in the apartment. So now it's going to go pull that information out. If I want to add something else into the apartment, I could say uh, let's let's say that we're going to do uh, you know give me a number and I'll square it. So I'll put in this, another system dot console dot write line command, which is just writing information out to the console, and I'll say uh, let's uh, so so we're going to get a number as the second argument, and so I'm going to say go into the args array at apartment one and then that's going to print the number and what i'm going to say here is like two squared is four and so i'll say get the number first and we'll print that and then we'll sit, concatenate to that squared is and we'll want to make sure to add in spaces otherwise it'll just scrunch the number right up next to that squared so i'll add spaces on either end and then concatenate in and say um so what is Args one squared. So I'm going to say it's it's args 
one times args one. All right, and then again, Visual Studio just tries to help us all the time with the IntelliSense to, to make sure you know we're finishing out our lines and everything like that. So that's really nice. All right, so I've got my closing parenthesis for that, closing parenthesis for the outside one, and then a semicolon. I didn't mention it before that semicolon is like a period on a sentence in some of these programming languages. So uh, C sharp is one of them. We use the semicolon to indicate this is the end of the statement because we could continue this over multiple lines if we wanted to. So we can't just trust that it, it's the line that, that we know to end. Because we can travel over multiple lines when we're writing code, we want to make sure to have a semicolon to indicate when are we done with that code. When do we want to execute? And so the semicolon just acts like a, like I say, a, a period at the end of a sentence. I am getting an error though. Um, I didn't point it out earlier, by the way, I just saved. And if I had not saved before I made this change up here, and then I tried to compile and run it, it would have just said, hello world still. But because I pressed this play button, it saves it before it runs it. And so that's why it had been saved. Anyway, back to this, we're getting an error now. And the error says, args, well, the, oh, sorry, below that. Operator asterisk cannot be applied to the operands of type string and string. And so if I go look at this, if I was to change this uh, to a plus instead, then it'll work for us. And so, um, I won't save this time just to show you. If I go and try and compile this now, then it's going to give me an error, even though it's not giving me that error up here anymore. And now if I save the file and then come back to the command line and try to run, then it will compile, or sorry, try to compile, then it will compile just fine. But if I try to run this now, so if I say program.exe, and then I give it the first parameter, Spencer, you can use your name there, and then I give it the second parameter, 2, it's going to say 2 squared is 22, which is obviously not right. What's it doing? These are currently strings, so it's like they're words. So it's just concatenating one word to the other word, so it's getting the 2 and concatenating it to the 2. So this isn't 22, this is 2, 2. So if I want to multiply these things together, I can use the multiplication symbol, which is the asterisk, and I can try this again, but it's not going to work because what it says is you can't multiply a string times a string. That doesn't make any sense. And this is a string array. They're currently words, not numbers. And so I need to come in and, and convert them into what I need them to be. And we do a lot of this. And so one of the most common is to convert this to an integer. And we can do that by using the command int.parse. And then parentheses go around the thing we're going to parse the int out of. And then we need the same thing for this one. So int.parse. And now it's going to go into that string and convert it into an integer. And then we can do math with an integer. So I'll save this down to my command line. And now run it. And we get not the, the result I expected. I never compiled it. Sorry, I skipped a step. See, again, good mistake. Let's compile it first because it was still using the old version. Compile it first. Now run it with those parameters, Spencer and let's do three. And it will say, hello, Spencer. Three squared is nine. It's using our little array, our apartment building. It's now got a, a three out here. And then um, in the code, it can take that three, convert it to an actual number three, multiply it three times three is nine, and we get that result. And so even better would be to go up here and say, let's declare an integer a num instead of equal to, go get the parse int out of this. Oh man, I'm gonna have to do this fast. I'm looking at the clock. And then we could just say here num times num instead to make it a cleaner, so we're not typing that over and over again. Anyway, you get the point. Compile and run that. I don't have time, and it should work the same. All right. Next video up in a minute. Spencer out.